Anything pressing before we get started? All right, so let's look at the test. Finding the x-intercepts of parabolas. Finding the Do you have an example? I don't have an example, but I remember one, like, I get to the step, it'd be negative 6 plus minus the square root of 30 over 2 and all that, or something like that. Okay. So that would be, what section was that? Uh, 2.3. 2.4. Uh, 2.4 was basic... Uh, So it would be 2.2, because 2.3 was polynomials, 2.2 was parabolas. So you're finding the x intercepts when it would, I can't name the specific, but when it's doing, try it out. All right, let me look and see. like that one with a negative 5 plus 2 root 5 that kind of deal like that. like that there we go <laughs> yeah like that no if it tell it because it'll tell you uh, you know it just says, to, simplif to simplify your answer, type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So when it says an exact answer, it always wants you to leave it in radical, fractional, you know, that kind of form. On your test, would you ask for it? I will tell you to, I don't, I don't, generally no. Generally, I want, I want it this same kind of way. I, I don't like, I like you to do it algebraically. I don't like you to use your calculator unless you have to. Uh, generally, we don't want to use our calculators unless we have to. And that's just for, you know, problems where we're like, how many feet is this? And I want to round it to the nearest, you know, whatever. For stuff like this, generally, we're just going to keep doing algebra on it until we get it as simple as we can. Okay? But you'll know I want a decimal because it'll say round your answer or something like that. Okay? So this will be... 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. Okay. <laughs> 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. We want to graph this parabola. So A equals 2, B equals 4, C equals negative 1. So the first thing we want to do, negative B over 2A. And that's going to give us negative 4 over 2 times 2. Negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So that gives us the X coordinate for our vertex, right? So it gives us x, so our f of x will be f of negative 1. So we're going to say 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So 2 minus 4 minus 1, negative 3. So that gives us the vertex, negative 1, negative 3. Okay? Now, on my test, when I have you graph it, So we go negative 1, 1, 2, 3. So 
So what do you want to do next? Do you want to go up one over one? You, well, let's talk about. Let's look, let's look and say we yeah, Let's do let's do end behavior first. So, what's what's going on with the end behavior? It's a smiley face, right? Because it's positive, and it's even. So I know it's going to be, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, the question is, where do I go from here? I can do the way they did it in the homework, which is find the x and y intercepts. Or I can do it the way I showed you how to do it, which is use the slope progression, one, three, five of slopes. But remember, what do we have to multiply the slope progression by? By A. To get to six and ten. So instead of going up one over one, we'll go up two over one. Okay? So up two over one, up two over one. And then we go six. One, two, three, four, five, six over one. One, two, three, four, five, six over one. Then we could go ten if it were on our graph, but since it's not Now that's how I would graph it and how I will accept it on a test. Now if you want to find the x-intercepts, I have no problem with you doing it. How are we going to find the x-intercepts? Use a quadratic equation. What's the quadratic equation? Very good. So, that's going to give us. If you're just taking the test and randomly, everybody just starts singing. <laughs> Wait, if you, if you started in round and you, as you go along, the entire class starts singing it, then I'll give everybody 10 extra bonus points. No, no, I won't. No, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> All right. So, b squared is going to give us 16 minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 over 2 times 2. So negative 4 plus or minus 16 plus 8 over 4. 16 plus 8, 24 over 4. So is there a number I can, a perfect square that I can pull out of 24? I can pull the 2 out. And then I can rewrite that as separate fractions, right? So negative 4 over 4 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 4. And then simplify that down. Negative 1 plus or minus root 6 over 2. Now, at this point, I like this as the x-intercept. But you can't graph that because you have no clue what that value is. You yourself will want to put it in your calculator to get a decimal representation if you're going to use this to graph. Because you need to know, well, where does that, where is that? Does it cross between 1 and 2, 2 and 3? Is that like 97? I don't know. Okay, what number is that? Well, negative 1 plus root 6 over 2 is obviously somewhere between 0 and 1. And negative 1 minus root 6 over 2 is obviously somewhere here between negative 2 and negative 3. Either method is fine on the test. I will accept either way. If one what method works better for you, if, if you're used to doing it, finding the x and y intercepts, that's fine. So how do we find the y intercept? 
if it's in AX squared plus BX plus C, it's just C, right? Just negative one. Okay? So that gives us this point, this point, the vertex, so we can still see. We still get a parabola of the same basic shape. Okay? Yeah, remember, yeah, these numbers, the slope progression, that's the, the progression of a normal x squared. Because what's x squared? 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 1 to 4 is 3. 4 squared is 16, 9 to 16 is 5. So you got a 1, 3, 5 progression. You multiply it by A to make sure you get to the new. That's that shrinking and scratch. Yes. Shrinking and stretching constant. Okay? All right. Any questions about that one? All right, so let's look at the quiz then. Does anybody have any particular questions from the quiz they want to focus on? Well, there's 25 questions, and we won't have enough time to get through everything, so. Just multiplying, OK? Hold on. OK, so never mind. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to this one. Let's do this. All right, body mass index, or BMI, takes both the weight and height into account when assessing whether an individual is underweight or overweight. The BMI varies directly as one's weight in pounds and inversely as the square of one's height. So we've got a direct variation and an inverse variation. Okay? So BMI varies directly as one's weight and inversely as the square of one's height. Okay? Any problem setting that up? Just make sure you read the question and understand that direct variation always is on the same line, inverse is always on the denominator. Okay? You always put it in the bottom of the fraction. Uh, in adults, normal values for the BMI are between 20 and 25 inclusively. Values below 20 ind indicate an individual is underweight and values above 25 indicate that an individual is overweight. A person who weighs 180 pounds and is 5 feet or 60 inches tall has a BMI of 35.15. All right, this sentence gives us the information to figure out K. Okay, so 180 pounds, so that's weight. And they're 5 feet, so that's 60 inches. Uh, so that is height, so that's 60 squared, has a BMI of 35.15, okay? So 60 squared do what now? Square 
square the six and put two zeros for the zero being squared. Right? It's like six times ten. Square the six, square the ten. All right? So those cancel out. 18 goes into 36 twice, so that's 1 over 20. So that's times k. So that's k over 20. So multiply both sides times 20, and we get k equals 0, 3, 70, 703. Okay? Is that right? Poor placement as I'm writing it. 703, is that right? Is that what everybody got? Okay. So now we can rewrite our equation as B equals 703 W divided by H squared. So we want to find the BMI to the nearest tenth for a 155 pound person who's six feet three inches tall. So 703 times 155 divided by, I need inches of someone who's six feet three inches tall. So that's 75 inches. Six times 12 is 72. 72 plus three is 75. So 75 squared. So do 703 times 155 divided by 75 squared and round it to the nearest tenth. See if everybody can get the same answer. And is this person overweight, underweight, normal? Well, think about it. Someone who's six feet three and weighs 155 pounds, he's gaunt. He's, he's someone that sits out on the front porch at Halloween. Come on, y'all, that was funny. It's a skeleton, come on. It's a slow day, right? All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm just shocked that 20 is normal, 20 to 25, you know, so that's almost normal. 155 for a six foot three person. Oh my God. I don't even want to talk about that. That's just frightening. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm not overweight, I'm under tall. I'm supposed to be 7'9". <laughs> so, it's all good. I'm not going to lose weight. I'm getting leg, you know, I'm going to get my legs. Yeah, I'm just going to get taller. I looked into that one time. That's just stupid. Getting your legs lengthened. You can get like two inches, but it takes like years, and it's super painful. And you still, you'll walk kind of like this. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would really want to do it. I guess if you were like really, really short, if you were a dwarf or something, maybe. I don't know. Some people might want to. Yeah, I don't want to do it. I'm already 6'2". It's like, what do I need another inch for? <laughs> I'm just waiting on somebody to say something, and I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> ah. All right, so next problem. Do we need to do this one? It's like, every, it's like every one of them. Yes, we need to do this one. <laughs> All right, so perform the indicated operation and write the result in standard A plus BI form.
So, what is the square root of negative 9? All right, everybody good with that? That square root of negative 9 is 3i. And then what is the square root of negative 4? 2i. So what's 4 times 3i? And what's 3 times 2i? What's 12i plus 6i? 18i. That's it. Sometimes we want these problems to be a little more difficult than they are. We, we, we make them more difficult than they are. No, they'll be just like this. Right. They're not. I mean, I'm not. I'm going to take these problems directly from the test, from the quiz. So I mean, there's not going to be any any hidden surprises. Yeah. Because it's a positive three. Three times two i is still six i. Because the negative went away when we came when we came i. Because the square root of a negative one is i. So we lost the minus sign when we took the i. Okay. All right. Divide the complex number and express the result in A plus BI form. So how do we do division of complex numbers? We multiply by the complex conjugate. So we're going to multiply by 6 minus 4i, 6 minus 4i. We don't really have to fold the bottom because it's just the difference of squares, right? So we square the first term, square the second term, and add them together, right? That's what we do when we do the complex conjugates. So we got 6 squared is 36, 4 squared is 16, and add them together. And that's how we take care of complex conjugates because it's always a squared plus b squared. Okay? So remember that. When you multiply complex conjugates, a squared plus b squared. And then on the top, we are going to we're going to fold that. So 2 times 6, 12. 2 times negative 4i, negative 8i. 2i times 6 is positive 12i. 2i times negative 4i, negative 8i squared. So we combine our like terms. 12 plus 4i minus 8. But what's i squared? negative 1. 36 plus 16, 52. So we've got 12 plus 4i, the negative 8 and the positive, or the negative 8 and the negative 1 become positive 8 over 52. 12 plus 8 gives us 20 plus 4i over 52. And then we break it down into two separate fractions and simplify. So 20 over 52 plus 4 over 52i. So that's going to be 5 over 13 plus 1 over 13i. Because all of those were divisible by 4. Okay? Everybody good with that one?
Really? It didn't count it right? That's the last question. That's the one I had. I typed in the whole answer and didn't add it. It wasn't even zero. I. It's zero. I. Yeah, it wouldn't accept the other <laughs> That's stupid. Thank you. That was crazy. No, that's just dumb. I get it that they're trying to force you to recognize that to be a complex number, it has to have that I term, but they don't make you write zero plus three I. You know what I mean? The reason that they do that is to force you to recognize that it has to have the I term to be complex. Otherwise, it's just a real number. If you don't have the I term, it, it just is a real number. And, and I don't know. It's stupid. I won't count off for it on a test. So you won't have to worry about that. So this is just negative 4 plus i, negative 4 minus i. Now you can fool this, but you can also recognize that it is difference of squares, which means you square the first term, square the second term, add them together. So negative 4 squared, 1 squared, Now, if you fold it out, negative 4 times negative 4, 16. Negative 4 times negative i, positive 4i. Four. Four I. I times negative 4, negative 4i. Four positive i times negative i, negative i squared. So these will cancel out. Negative i squared is negative negative 1. 16 plus 1, 17. Yeah, right. Plus zero I. <laughs> I said I would never. No, they didn't make you put, they just had 17. Well, they're different orders. That's kind of silly, though, that they would do one and not the other. So, solve the equation. Oh, this is a good one. This is a synthetic division one. So solve the equation x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8 equals 0, given that negative 1 is a 0. So synthetic division using negative 1 is c, right? So what's going to go up here? 1, negative 5, 2, and 8. So what do I do? 1. All right, so that gives me a new equation, right? So what's my new equation that I have to solve? X squared minus 6x plus 8. X squared minus 6x plus 8. Make sure you start with the one less than you started with, right? We started with x cubed, so we're going to go down to x squared and just go down. x squared, x, none, okay? So how do I solve this? Oh, let's just factor this one. We can do quadratic formula on it, but we, do, we can find two numbers that multiply to be 8 and add to be negative 6, right? What are they going to be? What now? Negative 2, negative 4. Right, they add up to be negative 6 and multiply to be positive 8. 
So that's going to give us what? X equals 2, X equals 4. So what is our solution set? 2, 4, and negative 1. Right, you've got to include that negative 1 for the entire solution set. Okay? So if I give you one on the test that's like this, it will be like that where you can factor it. It won't be one that you have to use a quadratic equation on most likely. You know how I said most likely. <laughs> I have to say that just in case I messed up. Okay? I don't intend to give you one that you have to do anything other than factoring on. Okay. So we did one of those. We've done one of those. All right, so let's find the zeros and the multiplicity. Did y'all have problems with this one? Okay, fair enough. I was about to say, this one, you can do factoring by grouping on. Okay, good. I was about to have questions about this one because, yeah, never mind. <laughs> it, well, I was looking at it going, well, can we do this one yet? Absolutely. You can do Descartes and all this stuff. Yeah, you, there's other things you can do later on, but yeah. All right. So find the zeros. Four terms. So four terms means we're going to do factoring by grouping, right? So we do x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. So what's our common factor on the first two terms? And that'll leave us with x plus 3. So what's our common factor on the second two? negative 4, and that leaves us with better be x plus 3 yeah. equals 0. So now what's our common factor? x plus 3 is in both of them, right? So the x plus 3 is our common factor, leaving us with x squared minus 4. So we're going to say what's x squared minus 4 factored as? x plus 2, x minus 2. So this is going to give us negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. So these are our three zeros, negative 3, negative 2, and 0. What's the multiplicity of the greatest 0? 1. What's the multiplicity of the second greatest zero? What's the multiplicity of the smallest zero? What does it do at each one? Crosses. It crosses at all of them, right? They all have a multiplicity of one. I can't scroll down. <laughs> But that's all it's asking is what happens at each one. So since at each one it crosses, right? Now what happens if I had got, you know, multiplicity of two? 
then it would touch at multiplicity 2, right? Just remember, multiplicity is odd, it crosses, multiplicity is even, it just touches, okay? Subtract, we're going to skip that one. That one's pretty easy, right? You just distribute the minus sign and combine your like terms. We pretty much did that one, right? All right, remainder theorem. not sending a report. You can stop it. Quit asking. All right, use synthetic division in the remainder theorem to find the indicated function value. So I want to find f of 2 using the synthetic division in the remainder theorem. So how do I do it? Use 2 as my c, do synthetic division on this. 3, negative 10, 3, negative 2. 3, 6, negative 4, negative 8, 5, 10, negative 5, negative 10, negative 12. Since the remainder is negative 12, that's what f of 2 is. And we can check it by saying 3 times 2 cubed minus 10 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 2, so 3 times 8 minus 10 times 4 plus 6 minus 2, 24 minus 40, plus 6 minus 2, 24 minus 40, negative 16, plus 6 minus 2, negative 10 minus 2, negative 12. Okay? So when you get this question, question, when you get this question, just do put this number in, right y'all, and do synthetic divisional. Okay? It's pretty quick. <laughs> Probably Descartes. He did a lot of stuff with this kind of stuff. He did a lot of <coughs> polynomial, uh, rational expression stuff. All right, on this question, this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It does have zero I. So dumb. Well, so did the other one. It said make sure your answer was an A plus B I form. It did. So anyway. Uh, 11 root. write it. 11 squared to negative 2, negative 3 squared to negative 10. So 11 square root of negative 2 times negative 3 square root of negative 10. Now what you can't do is just multiply and say 11 times negative 3 is negative 33 root negative 2 times root negative 10, you just multiply under the house. Negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. Can't do that. Remember, before you do any multiplication, you have to take care of that negative under the radical. So we have to start by saying 11i root 2. 
negative 3i root 10. Okay? Now you can do the multiplication and say 11 times negative 3 is negative 33. i times i is i squared. Root 2 times root 10 is root 20. I squared is negative 1 times root 4 times 5. So this is going to give you 33. Square root of 4 is 2. So 66, 66 root 5. has no eyes. <laughs> it's zero eye. All right. He has tear ducts, but no eyes. It's like pores. He has tear pores. All right. So that makes sense, right? Not where, not where the zero eye comes from, because I still don't know, but so. Forever. So that's another inverse and everything. We should be able to do that one. All right, so how do we find the vertex if we're given a parabola in this standard parabolic form? Plus 8, negative 3. 8, negative 3, right? It's just HK. Everybody good with being able to just look at one in the standard form and getting your vertex? So you're always taking the um, opposite, opposite of what's in the parentheses? Opposite of what's in the parentheses, not the opposite of what's outside the parentheses. So it'll be positive 8, negative 3, HK. Hmm? So our standard equation is a x minus h squared plus k. So this number will always be h, and this will always be k, because our vertex is h, k. But since our equation is minus, we always take the opposite sign of whatever's inside the parentheses. So since this is x minus h, the minus sign is part of the problem. It's part of the standard form. So I can't take that minus sign. I just take the 8. So I always take the opposite. If it were a plus, I would have to change it to a minus by multiplying by a minus. So I just change the sign. Okay? That's why we do it, because of the minus sign in the standard equation. So since our h here is negative 8, we change it to a positive 8. Our k is negative 3. It has a positive sign in the standard equation, so we just take whatever it gives us. So negative 3. And that's, a, that's our vertex. That's all you got to do if it's in standard form. But it does need to be an ordered pair, okay? Ooh, me likey. All right. This is an example of how you can use synthetic division with fractions. It's just ugly.
All right, so solve the equation. This one's not too bad because at least all the numbers are divisible by three, and you actually lose all your fractions as you go along, so it's not too bad. So we got negative five thirds is a zero. We got 45, 69, negative 13, negative five. So bring down the 45. Three will go into 45 15 times. 15 times five, 75, negative. Negative 75, it's gonna give us negative six. Oh, that's an even better number, right? So three are going to negative six, negative two. Negative two times negative five is positive 10. That gives us negative three. Even better number. Three will go into negative three. Negative one times negative five is positive five. No remainder. Now, if you get to this point and you get a number other than zero, you know you've done something wrong because it tells us that it is a zero, right? So. Use that as your, as your check. You know it's got to be, the remainder has got to be zero. So this gives us a new equation. 45x squared, what? Minus 6x minus 3 equals zero. I do want to factor this one. <laughs> I don't want to do quadratic on it with those big numbers. But remember, the first thing you want to do is factor a greatest common factor out. You can factor a 3 out. They are all divisible by 3. So start always, if you can, by factoring a common factor out. So I can divide 15, or 3 out. It leaves me with 15x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And notice that's a lot better. Because now I can see that this is going to factor... That's going to give us negative. That's going to be a plus. If you can't see that, if you can't do reverse foil in your head, you can use AC method on it. It works fairly quickly. Hmm? So AC says we're going to multiply A times C. Five times 15 times negative 1 negative 15. I'm going to find two factors of negative 15 that add up to be the middle term, negative 2. So what are two terms that add up or multiply to be negative 15 but add to be negative 2? 3 and negative 5. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite the negative 2x using these two coefficients. So 15x squared plus 3x minus 5x minus 1. All I did was just rewrite those that one term, so I could get four terms and do factoring by grouping on it. So now I do factoring by grouping. So what's my common factor of the first two terms? 3x leaves me with 5x plus 1. What's my common factor here? Negative 1 leaves me with 5x plus 1. So I get 5x plus 1 and 3x minus 1. Okay? So when I set each one of those equal to zero, I'm going to subtract one and divide by five. I get x equals negative one fifth. I'm going to add one and divide by three and get x equals one third. So my solution set is negative five thirds, which I started with, negative one fifth and one third. Okay? It would not be wrong of me to give you that problem on the test. I won't, but it wouldn't be wrong of me. <laughs> Grouping? Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I use in this. You do AC to get it into the grouping form so that you can do, you know, factoring by grouping on it. That's 
what you use AC method for. So is it considered a reverse coil when you just do it by trial and error? Or there's always quadratic, which always works, yes. It does. It has a theme song. All right. The one I give you will not have a fraction like that. I mean, I'm not going to give you that problem. I'll go ahead and tell you that it won't be that one, but it'll be more like the first one we did. That exact one? <laughs> if I gave you all that exact one, would you all get it right? I still got people going, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, can make it you just know the answer. You just memorize the answer. No work. Just negative five-thirds, one fifth, negative one-fifth, positive one-third. Well, you're very not going to give us that one, but give us one that's negative two-thirds. Add a bonus. Yeah. Extra. That's not too bad. I might give you one like that as a bonus that's got a fraction and and uh, and that factors as a using AC. Maybe. It's not a bad idea. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> not that not, now that you've thought of it, I can't do that. What? What? We've already used quadratic, so I don't have to do that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this one. So we've got x to the fourth minus 16x squared. All right, so we want to use the leading coefficient test to determine the end behavior. So what's the end behavior for this function? Everybody good with smiley face? It's x to the fourth, so it's even. It's positive, so it's a smiley face. So it's, it's a very happy term. It is a happy little term for everyone who knows Bob Ross. All right, so let's find the x-intercepts. What are the x-intercepts? Give them to me. Well, sure, you can just look at this one. Set it equal to zero. Factor out the x squared, you've got x squared minus 16. That's, perfect. That's the difference of squares. It's just x plus 4x minus 4. So you've got positive negative 4 and zero. But I'm good at math. <laughs> so. So we've got x to the fourth minus 16x squared. So we're going to factor out the x squared. Leaves us with x squared minus 16. So we've got x squared equals 0, x plus 4, x minus 4 equals 0. So this gives us x equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals 4, x equals negative 4. Correct. And this is going to have a multiplicity of 2 because it's x squared, right? So you've got x equals 0, x equals 0. So this is multiplicity of 2. Mm -hmm. So remember, if you've got x squared or something squared, there's two separate answers there. Because it's the same thing as saying x times x. So you'd have to set each one of those separately equal to 0. x equals 0, x equals 0. Okay? So, where does it touch the axis at which zero? At zero, because it's got a multiplicity of two. Where does it cross? At four and negative four. So cross, cross, touch. It's a new game. It's like duck, duck, goose on which touch, 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 cross. Yeah, that is, that's probably an adult game. <laughs> All right, any questions on that one?
so we've already done that. We've already done one like that. And that's just foiling right now. Be careful on this problem. I'm going to give you this problem. Okay? I'm going to give you this problem. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to give you this problem. Well, I mean, this problem will definitely be on the test, not necessarily these numbers, but this exact problem. And I'm going to show you what the answer is not. The answer is not. 36 plus 49i ah, squared. So it's not going to be 36 minus 49. It's not going to be negative 13. Okay? This is not the answer. We cannot just square the first term, square the second term. Everybody wants to do this. This is... This is, a, this is a full problem. This is a binomial times itself. This is 6 plus 7i times 6 plus 7i. Write it out as a FOIL problem. 6 times 6, 36. 6 times 7, 42i. 7 times 6, 42i. 7 times 7. There's your 49i squared. What did you lose? if you just square the first and the, and the last term. You lose those middle terms. So you got the 36 plus 84i minus 49. So you got the minus 13, but you lost the 84i. Okay? Make sure you do this. Make sure you foil it out. There is a formula for it if, if you, I mean, if you're so inclined to remember formulas, square the first one, square the last one, multiply the two terms together and multiply it by 2. I mean, if you want to remember that, 6 times 7 is 42. Multiply it by 2, you get 84. I mean, that's where it comes from. But if you want to remember an extra formula, go ahead. But you don't have to. Just foil it out. It is a foil problem. Okay? All right. It's 12.15. If you've got any questions while you're working on this, do not hesitate to email me or remind me. Uh, I will get a remind quicker than I will get anything else. Uh, email comes second. Any, you know, if you use Blackboard, that's third. If you come by my office or call me, if I'm in my office, that's quickest, really, the very quickest. But a lot of times I'm downstairs in the lab too, so you can also try the lab.